Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. I am Josh McCarty, or Beecher. Uh, I think everybody knows me as Beecher here, so I go by both, Beecher and Josh. So I think everybody's been calling me Beecher so far. So I, I've been meeting with the, the committee, and, and uh, hopefully maybe things will progress, and I'll get to be with you all long term uh, as a, a contemporary worship leader. So we'll see if God leads us that way. My family's in the back, and I think uh, Pastor Daniel's going to introduce them. I'll introduce these guys on stage. So I've got Shay beside me here, Shay Shepherd. So Shay and I work together, and I'm glad to have him here with us tonight. And Ryan Montgomery over here playing guitar. He's first cousin. We grew up like brothers, and anytime we get to, to get together and laugh and be silly, we do it. So I don't really know the, the normal uh, routine on Sunday nights here. I'm going to ask you to stand for this one. And the rest of the songs we do, I'll let you all relax and, uh, and enjoy and sing along with us. So we're going to start with Your Love Awakens Me. There were walls between us By the cross you came and broke them down You broke them down, oh There were chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound, oh You call me out of the grave You call me into the light You call my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking, all the dead are coming back to life, they're back to life, oh. And hear the song awaken, all creation singing, we're alive, cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive cause you're alive And what a love we found, death can hold us down We shout it out, we're alive cause you're alive And what a love we found, death can hold us down We shout it out, we're alive cause you're alive Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. I want to introduce a Beecher and his family. Y'all could be seated real quick. We have not had Sunday night church since March 8th on a regular basis. The only time we've had them, I think, is for a business meeting. So we're planning on kicking off uh, tonight our Sunday evening worship service. I grew up attending Sunday night church. It was uh, always a more casual time. In many ways, I learned the Bible more because it was more relaxed. You had uh, the preacher had more time to just keep on going. And um, it was just, uh, it was just a, 
a great time of just diving deep into God's Word and getting to know folks with that. But um, I first want to introduce, introduce um, uh, Beecher and his family. We, are, uh, we have a guest worship leader here with us tonight, as Beecher shared. And um, uh, Laura, will you raise your hand there? So that is his wife, Laura. And the, he has, they have two boys, uh, Aiden. Aiden, will you raise your hand? Aiden's a third grader at Trinity Christian Academy. Is that right? Trinity Christian. And then we also have Braden, who's a second grader at Trinity. Second grade? Second? Brady. Brady. Okay, I'm sorry. Brady and Aiden. So they go to Trinity Christian School, so a wonderful family with that. All right, we um, they do, when our service is over, make sure you have the opportunity to meet them as well as our band members. They're so, guys are so glad you're able to be here. I, I got to know them. First thing I gave them was Propel. That's how I greet folks. You all notice that's what I drink. Got mine on the front row there. Today we are, we are on day 15 of our week of prayer. So, or not week, of 40 days of prayer. But what I also want to pray for, we are part of a Kentucky Baptist Convention congregation. And every, um, the second week in September, we do what we call Season of Prayer for State Missions. And that's what we call the Liza Brodus um, Week of Prayer. And our offering, we collect for them. But I did, I'm going to lead us in our, our week of prayer. It says, we're going through this prayer, God. And we prayed for this this morning. And I do want to encourage you to continue going through it. But for this here, um, you know, our state is a lost state that needs the gospel. And the KBC has ministry centers all around uh, our state. And one of the ministries that they do is the backpacks that we're giving away and collecting right now. But in Louisville, they have something called a, a, a ministry center. And it, basically, it's a place that people come to, and they receive all sorts of physical needs. They have dental mobile. They give away the backpacks. They provide any type of food, clothing. It's just a place for in a low-income area that meets those needs of folks who maybe fall through the crack. Maybe they don't uh, meet government needs or something like that, but uh, they're able to have churches partner with them. Volunteers come there and serve and, uh, and meet those physical needs. And as well, so they use that for the opportunity to share the gospel. So we're going to have our time of prayer this morning, and we're going to pray for our Eliza Brodus State Missions Week. Um, you can go on our church website if you want to pray along. It goes through today, Sunday, all the way through next week. You I want to encourage you to do that. You also can give to that as well. And then we'll certainly be praying, continue praying for our 40 days of prayer. So I did. I came this morning here to lead us in a word of prayer. So, And before we do pray, later on when we get to our invitation, we'll have an opportunity. If you need special prayer for healing, uh, Brother Hurd and I will be honored to uh, lay hands over you and pray over you for that healing. That will be a part of our invitation. There's many needs, many sick folks, and that is the God we certainly serve. He's a God of great power, and he does heal. So I did want to remind you all about that later on in this service. You'd be thinking about it. So let's bow and pray for these two prayer, prayer needs here, these week and this 40 days of prayer. Oh, Lord, we come to you this Sunday night service. How exciting to be able to come meet again in your house. Lord, we thank you for these young men to be able to up here and lead us in worship. And we just thank you for what you're doing in our church. We pray for our week of prayer for the Liza Brodus State Mission offerings. We pray for the KBC Ministry Center there in Louisville that ministers to the needs of so many different types of opportunities there. Uh, those of folks who fall through the cracks and they use the giving away food in many ways is an open door to share the gospel. And Lord, we do pray for our KBC churches that they'll be faithful in, in giving to the Liza Brodus offering that we're collecting. God, we also continue praying for 40 days of prayer as we are talking about praying through your word and the power of purity, staying pure and faithful to your word. And Lord, I just pray that we will be a church that is faithful to you and to your word. Thank you for this wonderful evening worship service. God, I just pray that if anyone here is in need of healing or life change, that this will be a service that transforms their life. God, we just thank you for the great things you're doing in our church as well as what you're doing across our country and, and in the world as there's uh, many, many folks turning to you even amidst a so-called pandemic. Lord, people are experiencing revival, and we pray we will experience that right here in Lexington. Lord, we give you this evening worship service. In your name we pray, amen.
going to continue to worship. You can remain seated and sing along with us if you know the songs. If not, uh, just sit back and enjoy. clouds kings and kingdoms will bow down and every chain will break his broken hearts declare his praise who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power Fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. And who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. Fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him. stop the Lord Almighty, and who can stop the Lord Almighty, and who can stop the Lord Almighty, who can stop the Lord, and our God is the Lion. The Lion of Judah is roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him. heard a message this morning on Romans 8:28. It says, and we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And, and the message was about what guarantee, what better guarantee in life do we get than that? That God's going to love us no matter what. No matter what we do, no matter when we stumble, no matter when we take our eyes off him, he loves us regardless. So that's an awesome promise. And that's kind of what this song is about. It talks about how great God is. Yeah. 
give life you love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you Lord oh it's your prayer and our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your prayer and our lungs so we pour out praise to you holy God and great are you Lord you give life you love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you Lord oh, it's your prayer in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your prayer in our lungs we pour out our praise to you only. It's your prayer in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your prayer in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. God. And grace will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you your prayer in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your prayer in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you holy it's your prayer in our lungs so we pour out our praise Pour out our praise, it's your prayer in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, holy God. And great are you, Lord. And great are you.
quiet my soul and remember the redemption's hill where your blood was spilled for my ransom and everything I want still dear I count it all as loss And lead me to the cross Where your love poured out Bring me to my knees Lord, I lay me down Rid me of myself I belong to you Oh, lead me Lead me to the cross. You were as I, tempted and tried. talking to Pastor Daniel, he said, you know, I could share why I pick the songs that I'm doing and why that I like them. I always try to do songs that I worship to in here. That way I can, I can lead others to worship. So th this next one is a song you may have heard before, you may not. Uh, everybody has the same reaction when I introduce it to them. When I introduced it to Shay, he, he went on about it for five minutes a minute ago. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful song. The words of it are are, are elegant very much and I'm uh, going to cheat a little and use my phone to make sure I don't mess up the words because uh, they're, they're a little difficult but I hope you all enjoy it it's called How Can I Keep From Singing My life flows on in 
an endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the sweet, no far off hail that hails a new creation. And through all the turmoil and the strife, I hear the music ringing, and it finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though my joy and comforts die, I know my Savior liveth. And though the darkness gathers round, songs in the night He giveth. And no storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that refuge clinging, and since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I lift my eyes, the clouds grow thin. I see the blue above it, and day by day this pathway smooths, since first I learned to love it. The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart. A fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am His. And how can I keep from singing? And no storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that refuge clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much that you were able to calm that storm inside of us. Uh, even in this, this world with all of the turmoil and all the strife and all the things going on and the sickness and all of these things, you are able to, to put a mighty hand over it and, and you can control everything. You can calm the seas and the storms and, and everything in life. And Let us be filled with that, that every day when we wake up, how can we keep from singing your glory? I thank you so much for all that you do. I pray uh, for the pastor as he brings the message. In Jesus' name, amen. I came back and Sherry quickly pointed me out. I says, Daniel, you went up there too soon. I said, well, I was just testing. See how the, the new guy, how he would uh, how he treat me. That's that right. You just want to see what's going to happen. So, see if I could roll with it. Where, is, uh, is Dave, where did David Dell go? I was going to call him out. So, well, he was right there. I want to tell you, one time, David, I'll just pretend you're there. And uh, one time, it was in Georgia, I ran up way too soon. And you know, when a music minister Beecher has been at church a long time, you know, they don't, they, they'll hurt your feelings. So, uh, I remember the g- gentleman there in Georgia just says, Daniel, we have one more, one more song. You just head on back. So, I had to walk of shame to go back down to the pew to, uh, to wait for my turn. So, I, I ran up there too early. But we are. What a great time here to worship the Lord. With that, I want you to open up your Bibles to the book of Exodus. I know the past year and a half you've been watching every single Sunday night video that Junior and I come up here on Monday or Tuesday and shoot in advance. You've been anxiously watching them 
every week online or you listen to them on our podcast. But in case you haven't been following along the past year and a half, we have been going through the book of Exodus. And today we're coming to a, a passage in Scripture, one that we should all know. It's about a man named Jeff, Jethro. It, isn't he in the Beverly Hillbillies? Uh, I've never seen it, but I've heard about it. But Jethro is the father-in-law of Moses. And we're going to see two main principles tonight. I want you all to take away from this. I'm going to give it, we're, you go ahead and turn your Bibles. It's in Exodus chapter 18. What we're going to see, I'm going to tell you the two main points before we even get to them. Jethro did not know the Lord. And he witnessed his son-in-law and his daughter Zipporah and their family and the deliverance that God raised up Moses for to lead them through the Red Sea into freedom from slavery in Egypt. And they came back to Mount Sinai. And then where that's remember Mount Sinai is the mountain of God where everything happened. That's the mountain that Moses was called in. And he had to take off his sandals when the Lord appeared to him in a, a bush that was on fire, but it would not burn up. Because remember, the Lord says, I want you to know, Moses, I'm going to confirm something. You're going to go to Egypt and free the people. And a sign to you is, soon you will be back here at this mountain worshiping me with all the Israelites. They will be back. And God fulfilled that. And Jethro witnessed that. He saw his family come back, his son-in-law. All of them came back with Israelites. And he worshiped the Lord too. And the principle of that is you and I need to be praying and expecting our family to get saved. Do you have family members who are not in church? They don't know the Lord? And it might even be in-laws. God wants to see the family that you married into. Maybe God is using your marriage to your spouse to help reach some of those in-law family members to see them saved. God's plan and purpose is for a people everywhere to come to know the Lord. And God is going to, in this passage, we're going to see Jethro get saved. He's going to begin worshiping the Lord. And the second thing we're going to see here is Jethro was a very wise man. He, got, he knew the Lord, he got saved. But then what happened is, he came to, and he witnessed what Moses was doing. Have you ever met a workaholic? Have you ever met someone that, They literally just will do everything themselves. And even if you do something for them, they're going to go back behind your back and they're going to fix it. It doesn't matter what they're going to do, what they're going to do. They want it their way or no way. And in many ways, Moses found himself in this unique situation where he was the only judge of all of these Israelites that came out of slavery. They came out of Egypt. And all day, Moses would get up and, read, and basically teach them the law and teach them God's commands and make judgments on them. What's right or wrong, who owes what. And Jethro, remember Jethro, what the story with, we're going to see here, Jethro, after Moses and uh, Zipporah were married, and God called Moses, this is the land of Midian, Midian, this region, is what we call the Sinai Peninsula today. It's in current day Egypt. But it's there, this unique little patch of land that's between mainland Egypt and then Israel. It just kind of fits, and also if you keep going Saudi Arabia, it just fits right there. kind of jets out a little bit in the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea's uh, right there. And that's where Midian was. Well, remember, that is the area that God called Moses from. And when God called him to go back to Egypt, Zipporah and his two sons did not go with him because God had told him, you're going to come back to this mountain. So he probably told his wife, Zipporah, I want you to know of God affirmed to me that I will be back here. So I don't exactly know how long I'm going to go. We're going to have some plagues and miracles are going to happen. Some unusual things are going to occur. But I promise you, if God said I'm going to be back at this mountain, we will be back at this mountain. So Zipporah and the family stayed there. So Jethro, what happened is, when Moses left, I want you all to understand what happened. Moses was a herdsman. 
Remember, his first 40 years, he grew up in the palace. His second 40 years in his life, from age 40 to 80, God just had him in Midian taking care of animals and sheep and cows and goats. He, just, he, just, he was a farmer. He took care of the animals. He worked the ground. And God called this 80-year-old man to go speak to Pharaoh to let my people go. Well, Jethro, he had to be older as well. He told Moses, you know, Jethro's probably in his, he had to be in his 90s, upper 90s, 100, even early 100 years, 100 years old. He's a wise man. He lived in the land of Midian. And his son-in-law left Midian, went to Egypt, and he comes back with a million and a half people following him. And all of a sudden, Jethro looks up and goes, this mo- what on earth has happened? Here's the whole Israelite community. They're all free now. Moses just literally defeated Pharaoh and all of Egypt. you obviously using the power of God. So Jethro sees this, folks, and he gets saved. But then Jethro is a wise man. He saw that all these people were coming to Moses. And he's going to say, Moses, you've got to learn the principle of delegation. You are literally going to wear yourself out. You're going to kill yourself if you don't invest in some other people. And I think that's our principle that God's going to speak to us today. We need to, through the power of the Lord and our changed life and what God is doing in our life, we can see our other family members saved. And many times we need a Jethro speaking truth into our life, saying, you need to be doing this. You know, I won't even tell you about this Sunday night service. There were some people in our church that were like, you know, a lot of churches are getting rid of Sunday night church. And we were doing community groups here at that time. We don't need to have Sunday night church. You know, because a lot of folks, you know, just have done away with it. I, I grew up in a church with Sunday night church. Church I was part of for 12 years in Georgia. We had Sunday night church. And it was in our deacons meeting in June when... I believe it was unanimous, Ben. Every deacon says, no, we need Sunday night church. This is important. Folks need to hear the word of God. They need the opportunity to get saved or pray for. You make this a priority in your life. And it would have been easy for some of us saying, well, we don't need this. But I think there's wisdom in listening to folks saying, this is important. This matters. The Lord's Day isn't a day for football. It's not a day to catch up on what you didn't fix the rest of the week. It's a day of worship. And sometimes in our life, we need Jethro to speak truth to us. Where they come along and say, Son, you need to do this. It's like coming up too early for the music minister. So I was one more song. So it's like, here's your seat. Go back down. All right, open up your Bibles. We're going to read along. I want you to follow along in your Bibles. I think this is going to be on the screen too, but you can always follow, follow along here in your Scriptures. We're in Exodus chapter 18. This is the story of Jethro. Moses' father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, heard about everything that God had done for Moses and for God's people Israel when the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken... In, taken in Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. So sent her back, meaning after God called Moses, Moses sent back his family to this, air, this region of Midian while he went to Egypt to free the people. That's what he's talking about here. Along with her two sons, one of whom was named Gershom, because Moses said, I've been a resident alien in a foreign land, and the other Eliezer, because he had said, the God of my father was my helper, and rescued me from Pharaoh's sword. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, along with Moses' wife and sons, came to him in the wilderness where he was camped at the mountain of God. Mountain of God, remember, that is what we call Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. Remember, everything in the Bible has to have two or three or four names to it. So that's what, it's all one mountain. You can go there today, it's 5,000 feet and it's, um, if you like a hike, you can actually hike to the top. There's an orthodox, I've never done it. I've, I've Googled pictures on 
Google Images and looked at all of it, there's an Orthodox Christian church on top of the mountain today. But probably that church wasn't there, obviously, 4,000 years ago when this occurred. But this is what we're, we're talking about. God did miraculous things at this mountain. Verse 6, He sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So Moses is going to get to see his family. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed down and kissed him. He asked each how they were doing and how they went and went into the tent. Moses recounted to his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardships that confronted them on the way and how the Lord rescued them. I'm sure Jethro had lots of questions because Moses didn't come with a few people. He came with over a million. He showed up at Jethro's house. So I'm sure Jethro is thinking, wow, what on earth did I just miss? Jethro rejoiced over all the good things the Lord had done for Israel when he rescued them from the power of the Egyptians. Blessed be the Lord, Jethro exclaimed, who rescued you from the power of Egypt and from the power of Pharaoh. He has rescued the people from under the power of Egypt. Now, now this is, this is how we know, I want y'all look at this. This is how we know Jethro wasn't a believer. Because it says there, Jethro was a priest of Midian. He was a priest of Midian, but you have to remember, Midian, this was not, this was not the Hebrew land. This was an extension part of Egypt. This was kind of like the wilderness. This would be like, uh, what would it be like? It's like, um, you know, let's put it in the context of our state. I don't want to pick on eastern Kentucky. It's just like you're going down in southern Kentucky along the Tennessee. It's just south of Lake Cumberland. Big South National Forest Recreation Center down. There's just not a lot there. Why would you go down there? Unless you're going fishing, unless you're going hunting, unless you're going hiking, there's just a rural area that you would have to travel several, maybe a hundred miles to, to get to. So usually, a lot of times, when you're out in a rural country area, out of sight, out of mind. So he is a priest in Midian, but he's not a priest to the Lord. Because look what he says here in verse 11. Now, I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Well, that's important because he likely worshipped those other gods. Jethro was participating in what we would call polytheism. The worship of multiple gods. Idols, praying to the god of the sun, praying to god of the moon. You just pick your God. So what he's saying is, wow, because I just witnessed this great miracle, now I know that God is the great God. Because he did wonders when the Egyptians acted arrogantly against Egypt. Arrogantly means Pharaoh would not let the people to go after the ten plagues. So Jethro is hearing the firsthand story of this. So God was able to save Moses' father-in-law by the great story of the ten plagues and the parting of the Red Sea and how the Egyptians died. It goes on to say in verse 12 in your Bible, Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' father-in-law in God's presence. So, we see in this passage here, this is kind of the first section. The first section, what we're looking at, is Jethro. Moses reunites with his family. Jethro gets saved. And I want you to take away from this section this evening, who in your life that you need, needs to experience, needs to witness what God has done in your life. What I love about this passage, it says Moses, he, remember, he's walking up with all these people with him. But then he went in the tent alone, one-on-one, and spoke with his father-in-law. You know, there's some things in private that you want to speak to privately. In many ways, sharing the gospel, a personal evangelism story, that personal story of telling how God has changed your life, that needs to be a private conversation. You pull someone off the side. You go in their home. You say, let me tell you what God's doing in my life. You just do it in a kind way. 
That's what Moses is doing. He's saying, Jethro, I want you to know the Lord is great. He did this. It's not me. And Jethro worshiped the Lord. He says, now I realize, Moses, because of your testimony of a changed life and the miracles God has done, I believe. Here's my sacrifice. These other gods are false. Your God, Yahweh, He is the true God. Moses' family was saved. I think that's important too because Zipporah, you know, sh- you have to remember, Moses married Zipporah. That's Jethro's daughter. We don't know. Maybe Zipporah, when he first met her, she was not a believer. The Bible speaks against marrying unbelievers. But in this case, we see Moses' family, they turn to the Lord. You can pray through God, you can witness through God's miracles that have changed life. God can save your family members, including your in-laws, and people that you feel are far from God. No, the Lord is a great God. Okay, that's section one of this chapter here. Now we're going to shift. Now we're going to get into the principle of delegation. Delegation reminds us that one of the, we, wanna, we always want to do the one or two things or three things that we are best at. There are certain things that God has given you a gift, God has given you a skill, God has given you a knowledge that you, are, you excel at that. And those are the things that you want to be focusing on. If you find yourself doing too many things, you've joined too many clubs, you've joined too many committees, you have overextended yourself, what happens is you're tired. And then the things that matter the most you don't have the energy or the time to give towards. This is why it's so important for us spiritually that when we are at our best, we give that time to God. I'm convinced my best, when I am most alert in life, is probably between the hours of about 8.30, let's say, to 11.30. That way church has to end at 11.30. At 10.30 worship service. The morning hours is my best time. And like many of you, you start getting late in the afternoons, 2, 3, 4 o'clock, what happens? You're ready, you're ready to doze off. You're starting to get tired. Well, Moses here, he is about to learn from his father-in-law that he's overextending himself. You want to give your best time to the Lord and to, 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 to what, what your skill is. So follow along in your Bibles. Verse 13 of Exodus 18. God's Word says, The next day, Moses sat down to judge the people. So, all right, we met Dad, we met Father-in-law. It's time to get to work. So now we're going to go to work. And, he's, and the people stood around Moses from morning until evening. Could you imagine? What a rock star. When Moses' father-in-law saw everything he was doing for them, that he was doing for them, he has. What is this you're doing for the people? Moses, you've lost your mind. Why are you giving this much time to them? Why are you alone sitting as judge while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? What an awful life. Who on earth would want to do this? You don't even have time to spend with God. All you're doing is dealing with a mob of folks wanting your attention. Moses replied to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God, whenever they have a dispute, it comes to me, and I make a decision between one man and another. I teach them God's statutes and laws. So Moses explained what he was doing. And this is the wisdom of a father-in-law. I want to tell you, if, you, if you're a father-in-law, if you have a son-in-law, you, need to, you, want, to, you want to teach them part of aging and maturing is you're not being ugly to folks. You're just, you have a ministry, a gift of showing people what to do. Now, in a kind way, so this is what to do. This is best. This works. Here's a better way to do this. Approach it at this angle. You just try to help throughout. You meet the folks in a kind way of trying to redirect them. That's all Jethro's doing. He's saying, Moses, you're going to wear yourself out. This is too much. It's wisdom from father in law. When I was preparing this message, I asked Sherry. So Sherry, what's the best advice your father's ever given me? And she told, she informed me the best advice Harry Coleman said was to marry me. So that's what she told me that Harry gave me. But um, 
uh, he does. Harry will let me know things. So it's the same thing here. Verse 17. Moses' father-in-law says, What you're doing is not good, Moses' father-in-law said to him. You will certainly wear yourself out, and both you and the people out who are with you, because the task is too heavy for you. You can't do it all alone. Now listen to me. I will give you some advice, and God be with you. You know what that means? That means, son, I'm going to tell you what God wants you to do, but ultimately the ball's in your court. I'll give you some instruction. I'll point you in the right direction. I'll share with you some wisdom, but we all know or you're just going to do what you're going to do. But if you do this, it will help you. And that's what kind of Moses, or what is Moses is hearing. But you have to also remember, too, Moses... He's 80 years old, so he's not a spring chicken to begin with. So, but he's talking to a man who's likely 100 years old. So he has to, he's certainly showing his respect to his father-in-law. But Moses is, real, Moses is getting good advice. And it says here, verse 20, instruct them. All right, sorry, verse 19. Now listen to me, I will give you some advice and God be with you. You be the one to represent the people before God and bring their cases to Him. Instruct them about the statutes and laws and teach them the way to live and what they must do. But you should select from all the people able men, God-fearing, trustworthy, and hating dishonest prophets. So he's saying you need to raise up some more men. So and notice the qualifications for leadership in a church. Qualifications in a leadership position in church is, is all spiritual. It's not how much money you have and how popular you are. Not at all. God's qualifications. Look at this. God-fearing. These are people who love the Lord. Next Sunday, we're going to be ordaining a deacon in this worship service. Innocent Ketty will be getting ordained. Innocent loves the Lord. He brings his megaphone to downtown Lexington and preaches the gospel. In fact, What's unusual about it is he actually does that on Saturday mornings when we have deacons meetings. And I remember telling one of the other deacons, I've never had a deacon miss a deacons meeting because he's downtown in the city preaching the gospel to lost people on the street. And he can't attend the meetings. That's a God-fearing deacon. Brother Hurd, have you ever had a deacon skip a meeting for that? <laughs> oh, yeah. So that is, that is what... That is what it means here, your qualifications, these are someone who loves the Lord. Not only that, he says, it is trustworthy. Meaning, if you instruct them what to do, they should actually do it. You teach them, and they go and follow what they're supposed to do. You trust them in the Scriptures. And look at this. And hating dishonest prophet. This was so important. Because it would have been very easy to have someone, when you're a judge slip you that $20 bill or back in Bible times switch, uh, switch not switch but uh, give you a fig something a, a Bible item that you would want to eat maybe and then it would all of a sudden sway your, your uh, ruling or judgment on something God is saying you don't need to have dishonest scales the Lord's making it very clear to Moses the men you select should be godly judges. I want you to know something. We're here in America, and when our judicial system is corrupt, we've lost our country. That goes from the Supreme Court all the way down to a little municipal court right down the street here on Main Street. If we have a corrupt state and federal and local, if you can pay off judges and attorneys, if you can sway and purchase justice, you have ruined your nation. Because you will live in a, you will live in a country of, of, of bribes, of basically money rule. You know, that's actually what's going on right now in Afghanistan with the Taliban. It's, there's bribery. If you follow the news. And that's something we as Christians, we have to fight against that. When people are corrupt, you do not you want to vote those people out of office. You do not want people to destroy our constitution. We don't we want people who are law abiding judges and who do not accept a bribe. Bribery is a sin. All the way back to when God is telling Moses, 
you find God-fearing men who are trustworthy and who will not take a bribe. Those are the people over us. Folks, this is why it's so important for us as believers, we can't keep our head in the sand and say, I'm just going to do whatever I'm going to do. Well, if we act that way, if we, if we pull ourselves out of culture and society, you will end up, when lost people take over, evil influences that. You will have corruption. That's why groups in Afghanistan are just lawless. Complete lawlessness goes on there. You pay people off and you get what you want. I'll never forget the story I heard of someone who, um, when I was in seminary, I had to take German. And um, the professor one time went on a, a is in East, an Eastern European area, and they were working with Germans there, but it wasn't Germany, it was another place. And he parked his car, and then, I think I've shared this story before, and then all of a sudden he came back, and a policeman was standing next to it, and he had a ticket. And the policeman just kept saying, you know, you, you're going to have to pay this ticket. You parked here. And the guy was like, no, I, the, you put a, the, the, all of a sudden you made this a no parking zone. Like the, the sign moved while he was gone. Like a, he knew he was an American tourist. So all of a sudden the sign became a no parking area. And the guy was just going to stand there and go say, you know, you've got to, you're going to have to pay this ticket. What are you going to do about it? You've got this ticket here. You know, I know you're a tourist. And you know what he was doing? He just kept saying the same thing over and over again. And then like the translator said, he wants a bribe. Just give him a few bucks and they'll go away. And he said he refused to do it. And the guy, I mean, he just kept him there forever. But that, that is how it is in many, many countries. You pay people off. And this is condemned here in Scripture. And we have to fight against it today. It's all around us, this, this, this corruption. That's why Jesus says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Because mammon, money, is a false god that leads people to hell. It leads people away from God's truth. Last few verses here. I want you to follow along. He says, these folks here, you place them over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They should judge the people at all times. Then they can bring you every major case, but judge the minor cases themselves. In this way, you lighten your load and they will bear it with you. If you do this and God so directs you, you will be able to endure. And also, all these people will be able to go home satisfied. Meaning, no one's happy in this situation. Moses, you're exhausted. The people aren't happy because they can't even get to you. This works. Having multiple judges and leaders who are honest and have a good jurisdiction system, it, everyone is happy when justice is served. Justice makes people happy. Moses listened. This is amazing. One of the few young son-in-laws. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. So Moses chose able men from all of Israel, made them leaders over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They judged the people at all times. They would bring the hard cases to Moses, but they would judge every minor case themselves. What a great principle. Moses left his father-in-law, let his father-in-law go, and he journeyed on his own to his own land. So they're moving along, and we all, but we do know based on Numbers chapter 10, Numbers chapter 11, Jethro did continue on some. They left each other right there, but they met up later and continued on. So what do we see in these principles here? God's teaching us that we need to look in areas of our life that we might find ourselves exhausted or overextended, and then we raise up other leaders so we can be at our best. The principle of delegation, of teaching and training other people, the principle of listening to maybe your father-in-law or other people, who's wise folks, whom God has put in your life to instruct you in the Lord's ways. This was a win-win solution for all the Israelites and for Moses. Beecher, I want to invite you in the band. Y'all come on back up here. We're going to have our invitation. While they come up here, I want to tell you, we're going to have our time of invitation, and this is opportunity. You can join our church tonight if you want to. 
you can walk forward and take Brother Hurd and I's hand. Brother Hurd, you can come on up here too. You can take our hand and we will pray for you. This is our time that we respond to God. Our online folks, y'all just send our church Facebook page a message. We can certainly follow up as well. So the band's going to lead, lead us in a song. And Brother Hurd, as we always close out every single, every single service with an invitation, this is our response to God. All right, I'm going to invite everyone to stand up. Uh, I'll be standing down here. You come forward and take us. And we'll pray over you if you need prayer or you can make a decision. Brother Hurd be standing there. I'll be standing right there, and we'll be waiting for you to respond to the gospel. And how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sins upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts. No power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds have paid my ransom. And I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds have paid my ransom. 
much for that. I do. Uh, if, anytime you need prayer, we are a church of praying. We are in a season of prayer right now, and God hears and answers those prayers, and it is certainly important for that. I want to let you all know about a, a couple things for next Sunday night. Next Sunday night, Beecher, Beecher with a band be here too? There we go. That's how we invite folks to church, just like that. So we'll have, we're going to have Sunday night church next week. Now, next week we will have a deacon. During that service, I'm going to be preaching about the qualifications and what it means to be a deacon. It's, it's all about character. That's what the Bible tells us. So we're going to pray over uh, innocent Keddy. We'll have an opportunity to meet his family, and he'll speak very briefly about that. And that serves to wrap up about 7 o'clock. And then we're going to go into our business meeting. So we have a business meeting right after that. So that's next week. So Beecher and the band will be leading worship, deacon ordination, and business meeting. That is next Sunday at 6 o'clock. So I, do, I want to give you all an update for that. So, all right. I, um, Beecher, you have a closing song or closing prayer? So we're, I, think we're, um, I think we're done. As you're leaving, we'll play, and you can enjoy, stay, or... Uh, sing along and we'll sing you out. I like doing that. Amen. That is, I'm so glad you're able to make it. between us by the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down Love.